Hello everybody, this is Richard Cespedes and Mad Cat Sphere, and I wanted to upload a video to talk about um, the importance of meditation and how to uh, achieve it for, for beginners and what I've learned from it. Now the thing that I've learned about is that, is that um, you, can, you can actually cultivate a lot of energy from doing it because in your daily life, we don't realize it, but our daily life, um, we um, use up a lot of uh, we use up a lot of mental emotional energy by reacting to stressful events in our lives. And that mental emotional energy is what is required to move objects. And you can cultivate it by not um, releasing it unnecessarily to things in your life. And how you do that is you cultivate it by being relaxed. And by being relaxed, you're building it up by being relaxed. You do it by meditation. You're building up the energy to light affect uh, objects and to understand the intricacies, the subtle energies, um, and to comprehend your yourself. Basically, um, to move an object, you have to understand yourself. To move an object is to move yourself, basically, I guess you could say. It's uh, because you become one with the object. You and the object become one. So you have to be self-disciplined to move an object. And you do that by understanding yourself in meditation. You know, it's not just an external object. The object becomes one because you're moving the energy around it and the solid object in some ways itself. And so um, what it is is that before I got into describing it, what you have to do is that uh, um, everybody has their own process of getting into meditation and maintaining it. When you do it longer, um, so don't stress out if you can't get into it because everybody has their own blueprint of doing it. But when you do it more often, you're going to realize that you're going to be more relaxed and more um, be able to be more clear headed to comprehend and to understand how to move objects. It basically it's like it's like, as I said, everybody uh, psychonesis ability is like they have their own tool. I have a saw, but you may have a hammer. But 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 even though we have different tools, we come up with the same result. You know, that's the way that I could probably describe it best. Everybody has their own blueprint and their own way of doing it. Now, the thing is, though, is that meditation, how I do it is you want to get into an uh, Indian pose thing like this. And you have the objects around you like a sideway or something like that in the can or something. And you can do it laying down or in a lazy chair, sitting in a chair on a, on a, on a recliner. And you just let yourself relax, be in a quiet room, let yourself observe the quietness, the nothingness of the room. You're going to absorb it and you're going to be uh, more relaxed. When the body's relaxed, the mind will follow. You're going to start being relaxed, but you're going to go through certain stages. You have to break through the mundane and the boredom. You're going to feel stupid or silly and you're going to feel like you're not doing nothing. And if it's not, you're going to feel like it's not working. But those are the things you have to break through. But how you, how you break through them is you just have to just let yourself just get through it. Just let yourself just go with the flow. Don't fight it. Just let yourself acknowledge it. And, and pretty soon when you practice it, at the second or third day, uh, um, you're going to find that the boredom and the mundane is going to be easier to break through. And you're just going to be more relaxed. Basically, what you for beginners, um, all, all you need to get really good and relaxed is just to um, have yourself be in almost a uh, sleep state, but you're awake. That's what it is. When you reach that point, when you're totally freaking relaxed like a painkiller, this is a natural way to get a painkiller feeling. When you get to that state, then that's when you're able to then start working on cycles and things like that. But the more longer you do it, the more able to you're able to understand the subtle intricacies, the things that you cannot see, the things you can only feel emotionally, the things that are unspoken, a different language of how to move an object that only you can understand as a person. Psychonesis is a personal thing. It's not something like a team effort. It's a personal effort. And so you have the objects around you. And what you have to do is you want to, you know, be relaxed. And I'm going to give you little tips. Even when you're not focused, and if you're beginning, if, even if you're not even knowing what the hell you're doing, which is how I started, you just let the object move and flow on its own. Let it do what it wants. And when it stops all of a sudden and, you're, and, and your intention was not to stop it, just believe that you stopped it. When it stops and it, and it moves back, just believe that you stopped it and you moved it back. It's, it's uh, psychonesis with side wheels. It's actually very simple. It's uh, disgust, uh, um, disgustingly simple, you know. It, it's fun, but you have to enjoy it. You have to be dedicated. You have to care about what you're doing. Follow, follow the subtleties. Let, it, let the object go where it wants at first. Let it guide you. Let it take it by the hands. And with the same with the cans, let it roll a little bit. Don't force it. You know, understand the subtleties. You understand it by meditation, guys. You guys can do it. When you're allowing the object to take you by the hand and you're following the motion and you're believing that 
that when it stops, you're you're stopping it, and when you're when it goes the other way, you're believing that you're making it spin the other way, is that that will eventually allow you to be able to have control, develop control. You'll be able to stop it with your intention, spin it, redirect it, and and all those things. When you practice this enough, and you could have uh, excel to move larger objects at rolling cans, meditate. You guys can do it. It's disgustingly simple. Like I said, just care about what you're doing, and remember, always feel good and proud about what you're doing. Always feel good about the fact that you're, you're able to spin a side wheel. Do not think less of it. Because if you want to move a can and you think that the can is more impressive or more better than the than the side wheel, then what's going to happen is that you're going to fail because the side wheel and knocking over foils is the foundation that allows you to uh, to progress and to and to move forward to allow you to move large objects like cans, rolling cans and things like that. So if you disrespect or think less. If you want to move on to cans and things like that, but you think less of the side wheel, you're not going to succeed at moving the can, rolling it or sliding it. So please respect the fact and feel good, feel proud that you're able to spin side wheels. Always, when, even if you're able to move cans, remain proud that you're able to spin side wheels because that will allow you to progress and grow. That's your foundation. If you disrespect the side wheel, you're disrespecting yourself because you're one with the side wheel. And remember, do meditation, relax, follow the instructions. Thank you, guys. God bless. And remember, let the object go where it wants. Don't force it. It's a subtle thing you must understand. Thank you.